Hello and welcome to section 3, Gathering Information from Web Servers and Applications. In this section, what we will do is learn how to gather information of various types from web servers and web applications. And the goal here is to learn more about our target environment that we're going to be pen testing into. Specifically, we're going to focus on three tools, uh, one of them known as Skipfish, another known as Dimitri, and then another known as Sparta. And each one of these answers a number of questions about the web environment. In this first video, we are going to take a look at Skipfish and specifically using Skipfish to explore a web server and its application. What we'll learn is what is Skipfish? We'll discuss why you would use Skipfish. We'll show how to use it. Then we'll look at the results of running Skipfish against a target system. And then we'll discuss some of the next steps along the way that you can use or perform with this information that you get. In this demo, I am going to show you how to use a utility known as Skipfish. Uh, Skipfish is a utility that is used to investigate a website. And what it will do is it will try to, in essence, browse the website and find the directory and file structure as well as analyze things like header responses or response tags and other things to see what it can learn you know about that and it will take that information save it in your computer and generate a report okay and that's what we're going to do here is we're going to use it to learn some more information about the target we're going after so in this case i have put skipfish in the command for you so let's see what this one variation of the command does is I have put in skipfish and then space dash o what this is is this is specifying an output folder and it means that when this command runs it's going to take whatever it finds the results it's going to take that and dump it into the skip folder so dash o space skip it's going to create a folder called skip and dump the stuff inside of it okay so which is what we want then the site's going to go to, we see http colon slash slash and then the scanme.nmap.org. Okay, first of all, anytime you put a website into a Skipfish, you do have to give it the protocol identifier in front. So that means http colon slash slash has to be included because uh, that defines the protocol it's going to use. And then the scanme.nmap.org, that's the site. In this case, the scanme.nmap.org is a test site that the makers of Nmap put out for people to test the scanner against. So I'm just going to use it here for Skipfish. So you would just replace that with whatever your website is that you want to investigate. Okay, now once I have that done, it's we're, we're in good shape. Uh, so what I will do is at this point just hit enter and let it run. Uh, just a word of caution. This skip folder, it doesn't exist right now. So make sure when you're running this, whatever folder you're in and going to create this skip folder in, or whatever you choose to name it, make sure it doesn't already exist. In my situation, if I open up my home directory, I don't have a skip folder. So that's good. It means it will create a brand new skip folder from scratch because there's not one there. If one did exist, you could get an error. So just be aware of that. If you get an error when it says something about the folder, look to see if it already exists. It'll say something like access denied or failure or something like that. Okay, so as we clearly see, that is the case here. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter. And it is going to take a moment and then boom, goes right over here. And it says, okay, here's what it's going to do. Now, if you don't touch anything, this is going to go ahead and run on its own. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter and the command is running and it does take a few moments to get good information okay now if the website's larger you may want to let this run for a bit and then just hit control c and exit out of it uh, or if it's a smaller site usually it's a fairly small site what will happen is it eventually you know examines the whole site and then just says okay nothing else to see here and stops so in this case this site isn't that big but I'm still going to let it kind of do its thing and gather some information. Okay, what you're seeing here is kind of break it down. Obviously, you can see how long the scan is taking up top, uh, the request it's actually making out to the website. 
Okay, you typically want to see these requests, you know, stay at a pretty uh, higher number. The higher, the better, uh, because it means this request or the actual process will complete a little quicker. If it starts getting slower, it means that on a particularly large site, you could be waiting a while. Okay, so uh, you don't want to do that. You want to have it uh, complete as quickly as possible. So it's going through, it's doing its thing, and you get the data on it. So it's building this information. Okay, I'll say right now this is enough information. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control C, and boom, it goes through and says it's it's leaving out of the, or exiting out, or bailing out as it's saying. And then it goes ahead and it's doing its little cleanup and updating its information that it has. It's generating summary views, it's generating a report, and then it saves this report out to the skip folder, which is the output folder, then index.html. Okay, so if uh, it means if I go over here to my file uh, manager over here, I'll click this and open this up. You'll see there is a skip folder there. If I open that up and scroll down, I will see I'm looking for a folder uh, known as index, and there it is right there. I'll double click on that, and it takes a second and opens up my browser. And so here is what Skipfish generated. Okay, so you can see the data on when the report was created, you know, and all that good stuff. Okay, let me go over here. It's saying, you know, giving you know, some basic information about the site. Now, any of these things, you can click on them and it will open them up, you know, for you to provide more information. So there's some overall information. There's a location up top. Uh, there's some content that has come from external sources. It's season here, you know, so it's got that. Okay, and you go through. It says there's a 404 signature scene. Uh, maybe and there's a something that it just didn't find. Uh, there's a server value. It doesn't. It's flagging to us, so it's saying Apache 2.4.7. So uh, as we go through, we see you know other pieces of information that are in here. Now you can also go down to the bottom here, and if you look at it, there's different types of documents that we're seeing. You know, so you could open these up and see and get more information on any one of these. Uh, same thing with documents down here. So here's one for like server messages. It said the interesting server messages. Well, what's interesting about them? Well, if I click on show trace over here, uh, it will give me more detailed you know information you know about that. So if I hit the down arrow on this, you can see what information is being you know provided you know on this thing. So I can see get request going out to the server responding back so here is the the content it's giving you know back and some details with it you know i could look okay well there's a server version in here you know i'm, I'm going to look for that you know i'm not going to sort through the specifics of it quite yet but yeah there is a server tag right there you know it's saying there's something interesting about it and so we might want to investigate that to see if it's a something worthwhile now, if you're done looking at this, and this is just some other, this is actual content that was coming across. If you're done looking at this, you just got to hit the, uh, the the top bar and close it. And you can do it with anything in here that says show trace. You can use this. You can click on that to see more about it. If I click on it up here uh, and I hit the down arrow, you know, same deal here. It's just showing it for a different piece of content. So you can look up and see details about really anything in here so it's pretty cool okay so what you've learned by looking at this is you've learned you know some of the rough structure of the website you know, as you kind of have you know more or less up top the different types of content that are on there server information uh, on a particularly interesting site you might see stuff about the technology like asp.net or php or what have you you might see that in here and so it all depends on what you're targeting, but Skipfish can do a pretty good job at getting you really good and useful information. So Skipfish, just to close this, and I'll close this here again, remember it's just a matter of writing it at the command line and put it in your output folder and then the website you want to scan and boom, let it go. So in this video, you learned the purpose of Skipfish. Uh, you saw the results that came out. You saw a nice little graphical report that came out of it and how you can kind of poke through it and see what type of information is in there. Uh, we discussed some of the options with Skipfish, as well as the analysis of the information and how to perhaps carry that forward into later steps of the pen testing process.